In this lecture, we're going to discuss a concept known as the Zeeman effect. But first, let's recall what we discussed in the previous lecture. So recall that the spin of the electron around the nucleus of the atom creates the electron's magnetic dipole moment given by mu. So basically, the electron spins around the nucleus and the fact that the electron has a negative charge creates the magnetic dipole moment mu that points perpendicular with respect to the area that is circumscribed by the spin of that electron. Now we were also able to show that if we take that atom and place it inside an external magnetic field B that for example points along the z-axis then the magnetic field B will create a torque that will act on the magnetic dipole moment to orient that magnetic dipole moment along the same exact orientation, along the same exact axis as the magnetic field lines B. So that means the magnetic dipole moment will orient along the Z axis. And we were able to show that mu Z, where mu is the magnetic dipole moment along the Z axis, is equal to the product of the Bohr magneton mu B and the magnetic quantum number ml. So basically, this is the equation that gives us the magnetic dipole moment of our electron using the magnetic quantum number of that electron. Now, this will become important in just a moment when we define what the Zeeman effect is. The Zeeman effect is basically caused by the magnetic dipole moment of that electron. So, once again, if we take that atom and place that atom inside our external magnetic field B, certain orbitals of that atom will undergo something known as spectral splitting. So basically the orbitals inside the external magnetic field B will split into different energy levels. So the orbital of any given atom has the ability to undergo splitting or spectral splitting when in the presence of an external magnetic field B. Now as we'll see in just a moment, not all orbitals of that atom have the ability to undergo the energy splitting. Now the number of energy splits of any orbital depends on the orbital quantum number L that is given by this equation. So the number of splits of energy of the orbit is equal to 2 multiplied by L plus 1 where L is the orbital quantum number of that atom, of that electron inside that atom. So, for example, let's suppose we don't have any external magnetic field B. So this y-axis represents the energy level. Now, the 1s orbit will have one energy level. The 2s will have its own distinct energy level. The 2p will also have its distinct energy level. Now, recall from our discussion on the quantum numbers, we said that the p orbital or L equals 1 has three different orientations in space. So it has three different unique magnetic quantum numbers. Now each one of those magnetic quantum numbers of the p orbital basically designates the orientation of the orbital in the three-dimensional space. So we have one p orbit that basically lies along the x-axis, the second p orbital lies along the y-axis, and the third p orbital lies along the z-axis. Now in the absence of any external magnetic field B, those three orbitals that each lie along the different axis will basically have the same exact energy level. However, However, if we take that orbit and we place it inside an external magnetic field B as a result of the magnetic dipole moment, there will be a splitting of these 
three orbitals. That is, no longer will the energy level of those three p orbitals will be exactly the same, but now they will have slightly different energy levels. And this splitting of the p orbitals as well as the higher orbitals, for example the d and the f orbital within any atom in the presence of an external magnetic field is known as the Zeeman effect. Now, how many splits will actually take place depend on this equation. So for the p orbital in which the L value, the orbital quantum number is equal to 1, 2 multiplied by 1 plus 1 is equal to 3. Now if we're dealing with the d orbital for example in which L is equal to 2, then 2 multiplied by 2 plus 1 is equal to 5. So if this was a d orbital, this would split into five different energy levels. And this is once again known as the Zeeman effect. The question is, why exactly does the Zeeman effect actually take place? Well, the Zeeman effect takes place because of two things. Firstly, we have the external magnetic field B. And secondly, each electron within any given orbital contains the magnetic dipole moment which points along its own axis. Now, for the case of the P orbital, we know that each P orbital has its own magnetic dipole moment that points along its own unique axis. So basically for the p orbital that points along the z axis, our magnetic dipole moment also points along the z axis. For the p orbital that points along the x axis, the magnetic dipole moment also points along the x axis. And we can argue the same exact argument for the p orbital that points along the y-axis. It will have the magnetic dipole moment that will point along the y-axis. Now, when each one of those p orbitals are placed into an external magnetic field, the external magnetic field will create a torque that must do work and rotate those magnetic dipole moments along the same direction as the direction of the magnetic field lines of that external magnetic field B. And the orbital that contains the magnetic dipole moment which rotates the most will basically increase in energy by the greatest amount because remember when torque acts on an object to rotate that object it does work on that object increasing that object's increasing that object's uh, energy and so that means the thing that rotates most the orbital that will rotate most will basically increase increase in energy most. So once again, why does spectral splitting actually take place? Why does the Zeeman effect actually take place? Well, every electron contains its own magnetic dipole moment mu that points in some particular direction. When placed into the magnetic field B, the torque that acts on the magnetic dipole moment mu must do work to orient that electron's magnetic dipole moment mu along the same direction as the magnetic field lines. Now any two electron clouds, any two orbitals uh, that have its own magnetic dipole moment that lie along different orientations will require different amount of energy, different amount of work to rotate that magnetic dipole moment. And that will basically increase the energy of those particular orbitals by different amounts. And that's exactly why we have this splitting of the p orbitals.